So, hey, tonight we're not left alone, though, and you don't have to listen to me. Amen to that. Um, we have a gentleman here that I don't know very well. His name's Theo Bob, and I want to invite him up here. You know, the first time I met him was on the side of Everest, and I think he was 18, I was, I was 17, and we were hiking up into the, to the peak, and uh, I'm lying, I'm lying. Hey, listen, I wanna, I, what I do know about this man, I know he's got a heart for this city, I know he's got a flame in his heart for the Lord, and I know he's come tonight to share that, to give of what he has been given tonight with us. So I want to pray with, with you all real quick and for Theo, and then uh, we'll let him get to it. So, Father, I want to, I want to ask for your, just a, your anointing of this man tonight. That, that your presence would be upon him, that his words would be like piercing to our hearts, that they would, they would just cut through whatever darkness might be there and they might speak truth, your truth, into the, the, the shady spots, the spots where we're a little afraid to look, maybe. Those, those places, Lord, we all know where they're at. Tonight, will you use this man to speak your truth into our lives. We look forward to it. I thank you for his uh, willing heart to serve. I thank you that you would come here prepared and ready to be your servant. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Well, I see how he set me up. He was, uh, he started out real slow and he got the crowd Messing with it, I said, it's a tough crowd. Now he wants me to come up here and <laughs> set me up. But good evening. So glad to be here with you. Uh, I'm Pastor Theo Bob. I pastor the church at, at Legacy Community Church at Lake Square Mall. Uh, I'm, I was hoping I could just pass off as, as Moses tonight and say, hey, he shaved the beard. He shaved and went to the beach and got a <laughs> tan. So I guess that won't be working, huh? Well, we're so glad to be here tonight. And uh, just want to share, it's just great to be in the presence of the saints and to be together. And so tonight I just want to share a word with you. Hopefully that after tonight I'll get a chance to come back again uh, another time. I will say thank you, uh, uh, Brother for Kelly, for praying for me. And I've been in the ministry 20 years, pastoral ministry. And uh, I recall being, when God first called me, I said, there's no way I could do that. And God said, you don't have to worry about it. You speak. You open your mouth, I'll take care of it. And God said to me through the Holy Spirit, said, listen, the people are mine, the words mine, and the results are mine. So, having done that, I've already told you it's not my fault. So I'm, I'm going to preach when the word of God comes out. And there is nothing that I enjoy in life more than preaching. The next thing is, of course, helping and being with people. Uh, so... Stay with me this evening if you can. I'll, I'll try to be short and not real long. Uh, I did have a funeral earlier, that, uh, so uh, I'm still kind of worn out from that, so I'm trying to stay awake, but as the Holy Spirit have his way. By the way, I, I did go, you said, oh, no big deal. I went to a funeral. It was at one o'clock, one of my best friends, uh, Pastor Mike Likely. Uh, we've been friends for a very long time, man of God. And you know, when we go to funerals, we know what the real deal is. Okay, sometimes we, we mourn still, but we know it's the real deal. Uh, let me ask you, any of y'all go on black folks' funeral? All day. Don't do it if you can help it. All day. But anyway, so good. Thank you for welcoming here, uh, me here tonight. Tonight I want to talk uh, to you a little bit from the Word of God and ask you a few questions to see uh, if, it, if, if the Holy Spirit will pierce your heart. Uh, I want to ask you. Who is your lover? Who is your lover? Boy, I got real quiet. Who is your lover? What, what's a lover? Someone that you really like spending time with. Someone you, you really treasure. You want to be with that person that you love. You want to be with them. If you say, I love you, but you don't want to be with me, I, I don't think I believe that. 
But who is your lover? The one that you really live for. The one that you hunger for. You don't have to answer yet. Okay, I'll pick on me. I, you know, my wife's not here with me tonight, so I can say what I want to say, really. And don't you guys go back and tell her. When you meet her, say, oh, you learned about This is what he said. Don't do that. Somewhere I preached, they did that. Told her everything. Anyway, so I say to her sometimes, uh, I, I say, listen, you must stop bringing your lovers to my bed. Stop at nighttime bringing your lovers. He said, man, is she crazy? Yeah, hear her lovers. Mr. iPad, Mr. Smartphone. And since she's an educator and she's a city official, she brings the school stuff and the city stuff. And I'm going, wait a minute, time out. Isn't this my time? So I said, I tell you what you do. Take your lovers and leave them somewhere else. It's not working, but I said to him, you know, that's right, yeah, that's what I said, but you know, it, it's not worth, she's still doing it. So, so tonight I want you to think of uh, who's your lover while we cover some scripture. Because I want you to think, how does God feel? Okay, I don't want to give it all away yet. All right, go with me, if you will, to the book of Hosea. Old Testament, go past Psalms and all that stuff. The book of Hosea. Tonight, I, want you, I pray that your heart is stirred as you, as you begin to really think about this thing. Who, who do I really love? What, what was the song earlier? My heart, my soul longs for you. My soul longs for you. Man, we're singing that to the Lord. My soul longs for you. See, when you're really in love with someone, your, your soul, every, every part of you long for them and want to be with them. You really want to, you want to be with them. So tonight I want to share with you, and as that question hopefully stays in your mind, I'll share the scripture here in, in the book of Hosea. Now, just a little background. I know most of you are Bible scholars, and you probably already know this. But Hosea, the prophet Hosea, is getting ready to hear a word from God that, that he won't necessarily like. Uh, he, let, let, let me say that if you don't know it yet, there are times when God is going to give you a word to tell you to do something that you don't want to do. He says to me, I was in the military, he says, I'm going to raise you up, I'm going to send you back to Eustace. To which I said, no, you're not. God said, you're going back. I said, no, I'm not. I grew up there, I don't want to go back. Not somewhere I want to be. Listen, I'll stay in New Orleans, Milwaukee, anywhere you sent me, God. But I'm not going back to Lake County in Eustace. Not going to happen. Then the Holy Spirit reminded me, he said, remember Jonah? So I said, yeah. So I decided I didn't want to go come back to Eustace by way of the belly of some well or something. So here I am. So anyway, watch what the Lord says to Hosea. And that's what a lot of people say. They say, I really don't want to give my life to the Lord because God may ask me to do something I don't want to do. You're right. He's going to ask you to do a lot of stuff that you don't want to do. Loving is one of them. Love, yeah, love. Do you know how hard, thank you. You know how hard love is to, to love people? We say, oh, well, uh, uh, God, Jesus said they will know who you are by what you love. And we, the hardest thing for us to do, we say, but I love a lot of people. No, 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 no. Love is work. But watch what I'm, I, I ask you again. Who is your lover? Who is that you're so intimate with? All right, go with me, Hosea. And I'll preach with my glasses off so I'm getting that thing Moses do. The word of the Lord that came to Hosea, the son of Berai, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and uh, Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. Bear with me. One of the things they could do for me, they could have done for me when they write the Bible, forget all them names. Give me a name I can understand. You know, the John, the Matthews, and Luke's, I can do those. But yeah, it's going to get tougher. Watch me. So in the days of those, he said, when the Lord began to speak by Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, 
Go take yourself a wife of holotry and children of holotry. For the land is committed, has committed great harlotry by departing from the Lord. Okay, let me get this right, God. You want me to intentionally go and marry a prostitute, lady of the street. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you imagine, just for a minute, you got your son that you've raised him up and Boy, you've taught this boy everything you know. You got him all squared away. You got him a good education. And, and now, are you going to go find him a harlot for a wife? Probably not. Not your son. Not your son. But God said, go find your heart. A prostitute. To marry. What? Watch this now. Because, again, when I ask you, who's your lover? Your lover is that one who that, that you long for. And, this, and the reason I, I ask this question, I, I, as I look at the church today, not just this, this particular, particular body, but the church as a whole. And we say, oh, in America, we got this problem, we got that problem. What I see is a lack of fire, intimate love for God. Man, when I first got saved, it wasn't even safe to go to a funeral with me. You know, I got saved out in New Orleans in 1987, and I was on fire, man. And whatever the word said, I believed it. And I'd go to a funeral with somebody, and Joker would be in the casket. I'd go, get up in the name of Jesus. <laughs> they said, boy, we better let this boy out there more. He, it was dangerous to just go to a funeral with me. Why? Because the word of God said it. I was on fire. Remember when you first got saved? We were on fire. Remember when you are first in love? When you are first in love? Boy, look at you. That's all you could do is think about him. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, that's all you can do all day. I can't wait to get back to you. See how when something, when it's new, when a relationship is new, we put everything we got into it. Right? Yeah. Well, when I first got saved, we won't fire. Oh, Lord, yes. I, 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 Lord, you saved me. Are you kidding me? You paid the price for me, and now I'm free? You paid all of my sin debt? I'm free? Have eternal life? Yeah. Oh, man, we were excited. But something about the Christian walk, we have a tendency to, okay, let me, let me move on. So he said, go take this wife of harlotry. So he went and took, verse 3, Gomer, the daughter of Dib Dibliam, and she conceived and bore him a son. So not only are you going to get a wife, she's going to give you what? Children. Watch this now. Then the Lord said to him, call his name Jezreel. For in a little while, I will avenge the bloodshed of Jezreel on the house of Jehu. And that's a whole long story. And it's over in 2 Kings. But, but there were a lot of bloodshed. A lot of bloodshed. And bring an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. Israel's what? God's people. God said, I want you to. He said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go marry, marry this harlot. Have children with her. Because I want to demonstrate some, something here with you. I want to demonstrate, use you as an example. Please don't use me as an example. God, he, he want to use you as an example of his people, Israel. His people, his called people. The people he loved. He said, I want to, I want to, bear with me. He says, now, it shall come to pass that in that day that I will break the bow, a bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Again, there was a mighty war there. Israel did some things, and you have to go to 2 Kings to read that, okay? 2 Kings 10. It said, and she conceived again and bore a daughter. Then God said to call call him? I'm sorry. Okay, and she conceived again and bore a daughter. Then God said to him, call her Larohamah, for I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel. See, these names have meaning. They're hard to pronounce, but they have meaning. Uh, he says, so name the children this. Why? Strategically, he's saying, uh, I'm speaking a word through, to you through your children. It means something. 
You, you know, you don't just call them, hey, uh, Johnny and whatever. He's saying these names have real meanings. And what we're going to see here, watch as God, as God do this thing. He says, so name them, the, name her that. And now, he said, but I will utterly take them away. He says, call her name Luruhama, for I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. The same people that God had promised through Noah and Moses and all of those that, that he, God's people, he said, you, your descendants going to be, Abraham, your descendants going to be more than the sand on the beaches. So now God is sound like he's mad with these folks. And he want to, he want Hosea to experience his anger or his disappointment in his people because when Hosea takes the prostitute and marry her and begin to have children, how many of you think that's kind of painful? Most of us don't want our lover with somebody else. Kind of funny about that. I asked my wife about that one day. I said, listen, well, you know, what, what's the problem? You know, if I bring a girlfriend home and shit, she had a problem with that. I mean, she's just unreasonable, you know what I'm saying? She had a problem with it. I said, okay, what, what? Okay, I won't do that then. So, all right, I'm, go I'm going somewhere with this. Now, so he had already promised Israel, but now he's upset with Israel. He says, yet I will have mercy on the house of Judah. There were two kingdoms, you understand? God's people, northern and southern kingdom. Judah in the north, Israel in the south, if I got it right. He said, but listen, Yet I'll have mercy. I'm going to take out Israel. I'm going to neglect them, if you will. But I'm going to have mercy on the house of Judah. All of them Israelites. All of them God's people. He said, but this much I like. This much I don't like. I will, he said, Judah, I will save them by, their, by the Lord their God. He says, and will not save them by no I'm not, It's not going to be something else that saves you. He said, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going somewhere. Nor by sword or battle, by horses or horsemen. He said, I'm going to do this with what God is saying. Now, when she had weaned Laruhamah, she conceived and bore a son. Then God said, call his name Lo Ami. Am I, excuse me. Lo am I. For you are not my people, and I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea which cannot be measured or numbered. Isn't that what he told Abraham? Now he's saying, I'm not going to be your, your God. You're not going to be my people. Now, do you think God changed his mind once he told you something? Once God made a promise, do you think he changed his mind? No, he doesn't. But it sounds like it. It sounds like he's saying, hey, I'm going to change my mind. Based on what? Based on how you behave. Or, or, so I'm going to change my mind. So watch this now. See, what, what the picture I'm trying to draw for you is this. Let me not go there yet. I don't want to give away the thing. You say, okay, well, I don't need to listen no more now. You can say. <laughs> Where were we? And it shall come in the, pl in the place, verse, I'm sorry, in verse 10. Yet the number of the children, he's repeating what he told, Israel, uh, what he told Abraham about the children of Israel. And then in 11, he said, the children of Judah and the children of Israel shall be gathered together and adopt a point rather for themselves one head and they shall come up out of the land for great will be the day of Jezreel. Say to your brethren, my people, and to your sisters, mercy is shown. Bring charges against your mother. Bring charges for she is not my wife, nor am I her husband. Okay. He's saying, Hosea, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go get this harlot, marry her, have children. Now, keep in mind, the whole while she's having children, uh, they may be from somebody else. He said, but this is what you name them. Now, if I Hosea, I'd ask for DNA. i ask for that. What that thing they do now? And I ain't going for that. I want paternity tests. No, he went along with it. So she having these kids, he knows she's out there fooling around and hanging around, and yet he's having these kids with her and he's still with her. And the reason he's doing it is because God, remember I said God will sometimes ask you to do things that you don't 
want to do. Why does he do that? Because he's God and he can do anything he wants. Yes, but in the process, he is showing us a visual. He's showing us something he's doing that's greater than even the pain we're suffering. He's doing something greater. He said, Jose, I want you to do this because when you do this, you're going to feel the pain I want you to feel and you'll be able to express it to my people. Now, some people in the church, some people in church, I don't know how to witness to people. I don't know, I can't leave nobody to. Yeah, he said, go and make disciples. We said, I don't know how to do that. You tell them how wretched you were when Jesus found you and pulled you up out of the mud. Huh? I remember 1987 in New Orleans when I had reached the end of myself and I found out how wretched I was. And, and listen, let me tell you something. I had, a, everything was, I thought was going well. And uh, you know, and, uh, but I watched my first wife die of leukemia. And, but before she died, she, she prayed for me. And she called out to God, knowing that she's gonna die. And she prayed for this old sorry joker. Let me tell you something. I found the power of forgiveness. So it's no small thing when, I, when, I, when the Holy Spirit used me to preach this gospel. It's no small thing. I still get excited when I think about how he pulled me out of that mess and gave me eternal life. I deserve to die. Most of us, we do, all of us deserve to die. But he didn't do that. So here he is. He, Hosea's gone and got this. This woman's having kids. She got her lovers everywhere. So now watch what God's going to do. He said, bring, told the kid, bring charges against her. For what kind of charges? Adultery. She's got other lovers. So now, she's violated the marriage terribly. And she's out there having fun doing it. And here Hosea, he's just staying married to her. Is he stupid or what? No, God's got his hands on him. See, some things you're doing, God will cause you to do things that you don't, you say, I, there's no way I'm going to do that. Yes, you will. Almost done. Bring charges against your mother. He says, uh, let her, he said, for she is not my wife or nor am I her husband. Let her put away her harlotries from her sight and her adulterers, adulteries from between her breasts. Lest I strip her naked and expose her as in the day as she was born. And make her like what? Wilderness. And set her on a, like on a dry land and slay her with thirst. I will not have mercy on, on her children for they are the children of harlotry. For their mother played the harlot. She who conceived them is, is what? Has been shamefully, has behaved shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers who will give me my bread and my water. She was going after her lovers, those things that were near and dear to her heart. She had a husband, but he wasn't number one. You, you understand what I'm saying? He wasn't number one. So she went after her other lovers because that was so much better. She found more comfort, more whatever in her lovers. I'll fast forward the story for you. She kept doing it, kept doing it, kept having to, kept doing it. Until one day God said, enough. She ended up poor and, and destitute and everything else. And then God said to Hosea again, go, go, go get her. Go, re watch this word, go and redeem her. Watch this, go and redeem her. He said, for, because what I'm showing you, he said, I'm showing my people what it looks like when you turn your back on me. When we decide that, oh yeah, I love the Lord and all that stuff, but I don't have time for him. God is not first in my life anymore. What you're doing is being a harlot and telling God, you ain't my lover no more. I got, I got other lovers. It could be anything. It can be good stuff. Like the brother said, it can be football. I love football now. I'm careful. So it could be football. It could be something else. But anything or anyone that gets between us and God, we got a problem. God said, he said in Genesis, I am a jealous God. So he, he used Hosea and his wife in this situation. Hosea felt the pain. And God said, this is how I feel when my people turn their backs on me. He said, but God, we don't turn our backs on you. We come to church every Saturday night. 
Yeah, but what about Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? What, what do you do? What, 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 where do I spend my time? What, what do, what, am I in love with God? Do I want his word every day? Do I want him in every phase of my life? So when you love somebody, that's what you want. You, boy, you, you want everything. You want to be with them all. He said, but do we really do that? No, if we don't do that, we're harlot. See how hard this is. So God said, listen here, I'm not going to be your God. So Hosea has to go back and he has to redeem her. Everything that went bad with her was because God stripped her and punished her. But he said, what? I will come and redeem you. He said, Hosea, go get that, that prostitute. She's all on the side of the street. She doesn't have anything. She doesn't even look good anymore. He said, but you know what? I want you to go and redeem her. Go get her. Pay to get her back. To which I would say, I ain't doing that. But he did it. He went, to pay, went and paid to get her, to buy her back. God says, well, my people, repent, come back to me, ask for my forgiveness, I will forgive and I'll bring you back. So, if God is, if, 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 if God is not your lover and you got other lovers, you have the opportunity while we're still alive. And that's why I tell you, I love funerals. Like today I went to my, my, one of my best friend's funeral and people say, you're crazy. I, I, I do not like weddings. I can do weddings, but I don't like them. I like funerals. Why do I like funerals? Because at funerals, everybody's sitting there thinking, what's going to happen to me when I'm up there? What's going to happen? See? So what I'm saying is God, he redeems us. So we have an opportunity while we still alive and breathe. I, I preach the gospel at the funeral, man. Because do you know the funeral is not for the person laying in the coffin? Burn the thing, do something with it, but it, they're not there anymore. So funerals for the living. What, I, what I'm saying is you still have time to, to redeem, let God redeem you. All we got to do is come to Christ, repent of our sin, come back and say, Lord, I'm sorry that I wasn't in love with you like I should have been. But God, restore me back. Restore, as David said, the joy of my salvation. Lord, forgive me. I want to be, I want you first in my life again. You know what it'll do? He'll make you first in his life again. In your, if you do that, he'll, he'll forgive you and redeem you. No matter. He said, but I messed up so many times. Doesn't matter. But I have done stuff so terrible. How, doesn't matter. Even in the book of Revelation, you don't have to go there. In the book of Revelation chapter 2, when Jesus appeared, when it talked about how Jesus is going to appear, and he talked, he had a letter to seven churches. And he told one church, Ephesus, the first church, he said, I got this against you. He said, listen, you, you've lost, you've wandered from your first love. So God kind of take it serious when we begin to put other things and other people in front of him. Are you following me? Saints of God, I want you to know tonight. You have to answer for yourself. Who is your lover? Who's it that you love more than anything or anybody else? If the answer is not Lord Jesus Christ, it's time to make that the case. Amen? Amen. I don't know your business. I'm not, hey, I don't know who, who this is for, but I'm just saying to you, the question is, who is your lover? Who do you long to be with? He said, but I don't, I don't have time to read the Bible. I'm busy. Oh, Really? I, I, I don't have time to spend time in prayer with God. Really? Suppose he just cut your breath off. The air that we, the air that we breathe, it belongs to him. Suppose he just turned that off. I bet you'll find some time with you. Oh, God, help me. You see my point. Who is your lover tonight? That's what I want you to think about. Who is your lover? Father in heaven, we just thank you and we praise you. We love you and we honor you, God. Because, Lord, we understand that, God, when you, you listen, you had to redeem us. We were lost in the world. We were lost. And you redeemed us through your son, Jesus. 
Thank you so much, Lord. And Lord, if there's anybody here tonight who's never surrendered their hearts and asked Jesus into their hearts, if Jesus is not the true love of their life, speak to their hearts right now, Lord. Draw them unto you. For we can't come unless we're drawn. Speak to them tonight, Lord. And God, for those of us who already surrendered our hearts to you, and maybe we've wondered, Lord, if, 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 Lord, if we don't feel your presence close to us like we used to, we know who moved. It wasn't you. Restore us, Lord. Forgive us. Forgive us. Restore us. Help us to turn back to you, Lord. Make you our number one, our first and only lover. God, we just, we adore you. We don't take lightly what you've done for us. We love you with all of our hearts. Our soul longs for you. Have your way and be glorified, Lord. In the name of Jesus and God's saints said, Amen. God bless you.